last week on talking science and tech we had discussed the sort of pressure the us administration ex- is exerting on tiktok the threats that it is uh, that tiktok is facing to sell or be banned in the us and this week we will delve into this issue further since a recent report by the wall street journal has revealed how facebook's lobbying could have also influenced the current stance of the united states on tiktok We have with us Prabir Prakasa. Thank you, Prabir, for joining us today. Uh, so, can you can you tell us about how? this law lo- these lobbying efforts by mark zuckerberg and by facebook could might have influenced the current position the current aggressive stance on tiktok we are seeing by the us no there is of course the larger uh, sequence of events that is already there that started with the us china trade war that is where it really started from and uh, there were a number of sanctions imposed trade sanctions imposed by united states on china a lot of which violates trade agreements so that was always in the background but you know the one one of the things that's happened which people have lost sight of that the world trade organization the dispute settlement mechanism has now been made defunct by united states not nominating allowing any uh, tri- tribunal member to be nominated and because of this the disputes tribunals don't have members anymore they i think have only one and they cannot therefore have a tribunal which needs at least three members so the world trade organization has become defunct and as a consequence the united states is violating various agreements trade agreements earlier now what has happened this particular ban is what the united states has threatened that if tiktok doesn't close its business or it doesn't sell its business it will be stopped function it will be stopped from functioning in the united states and they have called it a security threat now the minute you use national security threat then of course trade laws don't work so that's the other part of it us all the things that they have done which are essentially trade related or related to technology terms have been connected to uh, national security that they steal our data kind of arguments we all know that facebook and google of course takes its data outside the country and that's of course the country which is the united states the parent country of this company this has access to the data under the us law so it's not something which is hidden from my side and this is something which snowden revelations also made clear so the us position has been that you have to divest sell tiktok so i will say this is effectively a Uh, highway robbery if you will of one country's assets being robbed by the other that's really way it comes because they are now supposed to do garage sale sell bargain basement sale as it is called sell it and whoever is a buyer whatever money they get they take it otherwise they have to shut business so that's the threat tiktok is facing now it's also what you've said the wall street journal also makes clear who was tiktok threatening in terms of its uh, expansion of its business and it's interesting because tiktok is was the fastest growing social media company in the united states and it's clear that that social media space in which it was going was something which instagram is also a competitor there are other competitors there's a competitor called snap which is also growing but the biggest threat to that space and these are really very short dance videos which are lip synced kind of thing now those those kind of uh, the demography of that is really people who are young and that's also the instagram's de- demography and facebook knew that uh, for instance that demography it was not addressing through facebook facebook had lost a lot of charm for the younger people and in fact a lot of the people now on facebook are people of an older generation they seem to be using facebook more than the younger people so the younger people have shifted to instagram and also to tiktok as you know that in india as well 
the supposedly 100 million users of TikTok in United States. So that was a threat that Facebook saw. And therefore, now we know that Mark Zuckerberg campaigned with Trump and the Trump administration to ban TikTok being a national security threat. Everything that US does is national security. Everything that any other country does is essentially protecting its market, which is illegal according to the United States. That's the threat they give us routinely. USTR threats against India and a number of other countries come from that. If you protect your market, you're violating US law. And of course, whatever the US does is according to its national security needs and no other country is supposed to have national security needs whatsoever. So it's very clear that Mark Zuckerberg lobbied the US government so that TikTok ceases to be a competitor. Of course, somebody else will buy it. It's possible that Microsoft will buy it or Oracle will buy it. Those talks are going on. Oracle has emerged as a competitor. Twitter is also the sidelines, but it doesn't have the kind of financial heft that obviously Oracle has. And of course, what Microsoft has. So given that this is really something which is being forced for the needs of Facebook to protect its social media monopoly and hope that if ByteDance divests from uh, TikTok, at least for the four countries, I think the countries they are, they are targeting right now is the US, Australia, New Zealand, and Canada. These are the four countries that are being negotiated for divestment. So if that happens, then Facebook at least defangs a strong competitor because whatever it is, it's a ByteDance parent which is which holds the technology for what they have been developing and somebody to take that over uh, compete on technological development infrastructure all of it which shared with ByteDance uh, that's a parent company that would be much harder for them to do and the two suitors Oracle and Microsoft both are not in social media space at all so they in fact cannot be real competition to Facebook. So in some sense, even they do get an arm, uh, face social media arm, they do invest in social media in some sense, whether they will be able to understand the pulse of social media and do what social media companies are doing well is an open question. Let's not forget, for instance, Hotmail was the biggest mailing, uh, mailing applications that people used before Yahoo or Google Mail became popular. The Yahoo Mail, of course, is also not so popular anymore. But Hotmail failed when it was taken over by Microsoft. It paid a lot of money to take over uh, Hotmail at that stage. It failed because essentially Microsoft does not understand users and certainly doesn't understand what social media users do or want. So it's a relatively stodgy, old-fashioned company built on the monopoly of its operating system windows and its basic win window based application word excel and so on which are very popular and of course it's office applications which are really right on top of all of that they also produce servers and they're also expanding into other business but nevertheless the core of microsoft business is really the windows monopoly and its office applications so i don't see it to be a, a major player in the social media space. So Zuckerberg would have succeeded by knocking a major player out of his, of, of his competition. And it's also very clear that uh, Trump would have a price for this. He had already said maybe a part of the price that, uh, that, uh, that they're paying should go to the US government instead for forcing this, for, you know, this, uh, this divestment. Otherwise, there's no way ByteDance would divest the shares. In fact, they're planning for an IPO this year and maybe or 2021. And it's quite possible that they would have been one of the biggest IPOs in the world market. They're considered one of the major new unicorns as they are called, which means companies which do well initially and then of course make it very big on the share market. And also another question that arises from this is that if this sale to Microsoft or Oracle or any other US company does go ahead, then what kind of precedent does this set for, uh, for globally for, for, you know, for social media companies that do they now have to comply with anything 
that a ruling government says what kind of threats does this pose for them because even mark zuckerberg has sort of not been very pleased with the idea of tiktok being banned entirely in the us yes part of it is the, of course what he has to say publicly having been the one who has instigated the move i suspect he was really covering his traces by condemning it all no, is not good you know people can do it well let's look at what is going to happen to the to byte dance and its valuation you see byte dance valuation would have been of course dependent also on the us operations us does provide a big chunk of its money of its revenue it's a huge advertising market so it would have also contributed a lot to its uh, not only its revenue but also its stock price so what was the stock price of byte dance now if we look at the various transactions that has happened a company selling a few shares which it owned to other valuations which have come so byte dance it is, was to this today worth anything between 100 billion dollars to 200 billion dollars it could be 180 200 billion but you are really looking at very very high figures so this is the valuation of the company which now trump has threatened with at least the us part being wiped off or being sold to somebody what is the valuation of tiktok and the four country uh, sale that it is now offering or has been forced to offer so it is the major part of the byte dance revenue as well as user base really comes from tiktok so that's the the money spinner for them or the prospective money spinner for them if you look at ipos which are likely to come later so byte dance loses a lot of its as i said its clout if it loses the us business because its revenue is going to be a hugely important part of its empire now this part of it the negotiations that is taking place in oracle between oracle and microsoft and uh, Uh, by dance for tiktok tiktok is an app as you know and is owned by by dance a company so at the moment we don't know the prices being talked about but it's possible something like 20 billion dollars could be the price or it could be 30 billion dollars if we really take what it should have been it should have been at least 50 billion dollars let's look at another market uh, indicator the day microsoft announced that it was trying to acquire tiktok the price of microsoft shares rose by 5.6% or it rose to roughly about 87 billion dollars in the us market just one day so that means that's the kind of money that people think microsoft uh, owning tiktok will be worth so clearly there is a disjunct between what it is being forced to sell and how the market perceives its value if it sells it for 20 to 30 billion 20 billion would be a good price given the fact trump has given them now initially 45 days now 90 days deadline so they are working on this deadline so this is a said a bargain uh, sale that is a fire sale of the company's assets mean it could go down by to 20 to 20 225 billion instead of what microsoft will gain out of it simply for its share price rising if it acquires uh, tiktok Now, Oracle has entered, so maybe they will get a slightly better price, but it's unlikely they will get anything the price of what it was owned. So the question is, who has lost the money? Obviously, the byte dance investors have lost future income. They haven't lost actual money because obviously they are still making money and the, their revenue. They make profit of three billion dollars last year. Not bad for a startup which is just a couple of years old. So given that, this this money that market would have brought them and what they are selling for this is the tax they are paying the united states government or the proceeds of the highway robbery that the united states has now imposed on tiktok does it open a precedent yes in fact we are likely if this continues the us now could feel emboldened that any country any of its products it want to acquire will say you are a security risk you have to sell it to me you are sell it to an american company here now the question is does what us do work for other countries too now here is the big question the us has been violating international law for quite some time when it comes to war invasions trade relationships they have always played by 
two sets of rules. One is international law, international rules when it suited them. When it didn't suit them, it said, we don't care. It's our rules that matter. So international law doesn't matter for the United States. So why do other countries not retaliate? It comes down to the fact that US is the bigger bully. And because US is the sole country which claims it has two sets of laws, one international law and the other is internal laws. And this is the only country which actually takes this position or has taken this position. So can this continue? Yes, as long as US controls the financial levers of the world, and at the moment they do, I think this will continue. Unless we are able to see that there is an alternative financial system or option by which other transactions, transactions can take place, I think this is going to continue. It's not a legal issue. It's really, at the end of it, a political issue that do countries have the political will to build an alternative transfer of money system by which they can settle their internal, their transactions between each other. So the main levers of financial power is what makes Trump's threats work. And if US doesn't recognize international law, what can the rest of the world do? That is the key challenge that we have to face. And I think with the TikTok case, we have now understood that this was really protecting an American company, Facebook. And we also understand, understand that Facebook monopoly is a threat to even democratic societies, not only outside in the United States, but even in the United States. This is what the congressional hearings were. And we know what Facebook has done in India. We've already discussed that, how it has differentially treated its internal rules. Internal rules operate for opposition parties, but not for the BJP, the ruling party. So given all of this, we have to think about rethink that it's, a, I think, a pivotal moment for international relations itself. And TikTok is just a small symptom of a much larger problem that we have. Thank you, Parveer, for talking to us on this issue today. And that's all the time we have. Keep watching this.